guys, it's Luke again, back for another DraftKings Top 6 Picks video, this time for the Men's Olympic Golf Competition. I'm super excited for this week, I'll be rooting on the guys for the USA, but overall we have a very fun tournament, a very nice field, as well as a classic Japanese golf course. It was redesigned by Tom Fazio five years ago, made a little bit more American, but overall it's going to look like a top-end golf course, something that we're used to seeing on the PGA Tour, and overall, it's going to make for a great weekend. If we take a look at what we're doing in this video, we're going to be going over my custom models top six picks for this weekend's event. And we'll be using my data-based approach as always to help find and identify the best plays for every single golf tournament. Um, last weekend, we had a very good tournament. We had three guys in the top five, including Charles Schwartzel. We had Jonathan Vegas and Keith Mitchell as my sleeper pay of the week for the 3m open uh, we had two of the last four winners as well we had cam davis as a value pick we also had lucas glover as a core pick when they both went on to win their golf tournaments um, we're looking to build on that on, on that momentum and take down even more money now for the olympics uh, my golfers are targeted based on my custom modeling as always and like i mentioned before are based on my data-based approach i prefer to rely on facts modeling and game theory to find success rather than opinions or bias I have experience as an electrical engineer, and I use a lot of the technology and tools that I've learned as an engineer to help take on DFS and make it even more simple for you guys to make your lineups. Um, I don't just cover the PGA Tour though, I also cover the NFL, NBA, UFC, and more. So if you're looking for any content that's data-based like that, make sure to check out my channel. I also have a Patreon page where I give all my projections for all the players in every golf tournament. Um, 156, it's a full field or the top 60 like it is for this week. So um, make sure to check it out. I have my projected points, ownership, as well as whether they're in my lineups and stuff like that. Um, it's only a dollar. You get it for every single week, a dollar for a month. I think it's a great value, so make sure to sign up. Um, without further delay, though, let's talk about the picks for this week's event. Quickly, before we go over these targets here for DraftKings, we're going to review my key metrics I'm using for my analysis this week. Um, that way, you guys know, understand why I'm picking guys that I am, I understand why my modeling is identifying the players that they are. Um, at number three, we have shots game putting on bent grass. Um, we're going to be seeing the bent grass surface this week. We've seen it five out of the last six weeks on tour. Um, they tend to run a little bit slower than most grass types. Um, they're also pretty consistent and tend to reward more aggressive putters. So that comes in at number three. At number two, we have driving distance. This is a relatively long golf course, approaching 7,500 yards for a par 71. Um, there's plenty of long par threes, plenty of long par fives as well. So distance is definitely going to be a factor. And at number one, we have shots gained approach. Approach. Um, it's a staple of any shots gain analysis that you see online. Pretty much every analyst is going to factor shots gain approach the most. Um, it's going to be even more so important this week, though. Um, we have greens with a lot of undulation. They are tiered. Um, they were really beefed up by Tom Fazio. Um, so as a result, being precise into these greens, making sure you're hitting the right tier of the greens, is going to be extremely important. But now hopping into those golfers to target. For my spend-up target, we have Justin Thomas, a $10,900 golfer who after Colin Morikawa was after the flip the switch last week with a putter, why not Justin Thomas this time around? Um, he's one of the two best golfers in the world um, in terms of their approach play. I would say Colin Morikawa is number one right now. Um, JT's number two. Um, we'll get to my second man in here in a second, but he's probably number three in the world in terms of ball strikers. When we look at the statistics for JT over the last 32 rounds um, or eight events, we have him as number two in the field in shots gained tee to green. Um, you guessed it only behind Colin Morikawa. Um, he's number five in shots gained off the tee. He's number seven in shots gained approach. Um, all those are excellent numbers, even for a small field like this. Um, and while he's never been an elite putter, he's even butter, uh, better on the bent grass surface. He averages an extra 0 .09 strokes per round on the bent grass surface. Um, so that's only going to be a little bit helpful this week. I uh, can't hurt him at all. So like I mentioned, the greens are tier. They're very narrow from front to back. So having very precise irons, having the ability to put a lot of spin on your golf ball is going to be extremely useful this week. And if there is somebody on tour who uses spin better um, than JT, uh, I'd love to know who that is because uh, there's not somebody on tour that's better at controlling his spin and better than applying spin on the golf ball as JT. Um, that's going to be very useful this week. Um, you're also getting extreme accuracy when you get, get like somebody like JT. Um, Colin Morikawa does lead the field in shots gained approach at 1.68 strokes per round, but at number two, you have Justin Thomas. 
Um, he's somebody who hardly ever misses greens. He routinely puts the ball to three to five feet for tap-in birdies. Um, and if he's able to just catch a little semblance of a putter this week, I think he has a really solid chance to compete. Um, another wrinkle that Thomas brings to the table is his personality. He's somebody who's a fiery personality, um, somebody who brings a lot of energy, especially to the big ticket events. Um, and this would qualify as a big ticket event for JT. Um, we've seen him play at the Ryder Cup before. We've seen him at the President's Cup. Um, he's somebody who really relishes the opportunity to play for the United States. Um, he's somebody who's been very vocal about his support for the United States. Um, has a picture of him in his United States jersey as his avatar on Twitter and Instagram has for some time. Um, so much like Patrick Reed, um, the more that's on the line, the better he's going to play. Um, and the icing on the cake for him is that his performances in no-cut events are absolutely extraordinary. Um, five of his eight, eight wins on tour have been at no-cut events. Um, he's somebody who relishes the opportunity to play aggressively. Um, in a no-cut event, obviously making bird, um, bogey, even double bogey on a hole is going to be okay because you have those 72 holes to make that up. Um, JT tends to get in trouble when he makes a big number or two, um, really starts to feel that pressure of trying to make a cut. Um, he tends to snowball downwards from there. Um, at an event like this, we've seen it at Memphis before. Um, we've seen it at Kapalua for him. Um, he makes those and he's able to, to really get past them at a no-cut event because he has that in his back pocket. Um, so I expect him to show up with the highest energy of anyone in the field. I think he's going to have a lot of confidence as well. Um, and I expect him to show up big for Team USA this week. And now for my second man in, and quite honestly, this is my favorite play on the entire slate, regardless of price. And that is Victor Hovland, a $9,900 golfer who, as promised, is an absolute striper of the golf ball. He comes in as the number four shots gained approach player in the field over the last 32 rounds. Also comes in at number four in shots gained off the tee. And overall, that puts him at a very solid mark at number six in shots gained tee to green. Um, the only position uh, of his game that's really lacking is his around the green play. Um, he tends to hit a few loose chip shots from time to time. Um, but of late, he's really been carrying himself with the putter, which for Victor Hovland is a little bit atypical. We don't typically see him as one of the best putters in the field. Um, but statistically, he has been over the last eight events. He's been getting 0.31 strokes per round with the flat stick, but he's been even better on the bent grass surface. He's putting to a plus 0.31 shots gained per round on that grass type, um, which just gives him an aggregate shots gained this week of 0.62 strokes per round. If he goes out and gains 0.62 strokes per round with the flat stick, uh, he wins this golf tournament 100% of the time. He's that good with his off the tee game. He's that good with his approach play. Um, this isn't the type of golf course where you're going to bleed strokes around the green. Uh, you know, there's not a ton of rough. It's not really long or anything like that. Uh, there's not a ton of bunkers. There's not any water around the greens. Um, so Victor Hovland really is going to get away with having, uh, again, a slightly below average around the green play um, because all of the other parts of his game are just absolutely fantastic. Um, and to be quite honest with you, somebody like him that keeps the ball in play doesn't miss very many greens at all. It's hard for him to really get exposed by that around the green play. He just doesn't put himself off the green very often to make those kind of mistakes. So like I said before, he's my favorite play on the slate. He's my favorite to win the golf tournament. He's definitely going to see an investment from me um, to medal in this event because I think for him as a top three is almost a lock. And uh, as a result, he comes in as my second man in. And now for my bread and butter play, um, we have Thomas Peters, an $8,100 golfer who we don't really have a ton of data on. He's somebody that we do see from time to time on the PGA Tour though. And when we've seen him play, he's done excellent. He's also been a very good fantasy scorer as well. Um, in general, Peters has well above average off the, um, length off the tee. He also makes his fair share of birdies. Um, he comes in top five in the field in birdie or better percentage um, in the rounds that we have measured for him at least. He also comes in number three in the field in fantasy scoring per event. Um, we have well over 100 rounds for him in terms of um, PGA Tour starts over his career. And over that span, he's number three in the field in fantasy scoring. So he averages just over 80 fantasy points per event. Again, he's somebody who scores a ton of birdies. Um, and a lot of it has to do with his length. He puts himself in a lot of scoring opportunities. He's also very aggressive off the tee, hardly ever clubs down. And uh, he also gains 0.64 strokes per round on approach. Again, that's in a relatively small sample size, but he's one of the better iron players on the European tour as well. Um, and while they don't use the same type of analytics or the same types of shots gain metrics, um, he's top 10 in greens and regulation percentage, which shows he's definitely gaining um, on approach there as well. Best part about him this week is that there's no cut. Um, Thomas Peters is extremely volatile. Like I said, he, he doesn't club down very often. He's very aggressive 
on pretty much every single part of his game. And that's exactly what you're looking for at a no-cut event. Um, the risk is mitigated of those double, triple bogeys or anything like that. And you're actually able to outscore a lot of people further up the board with birdies in this type of event. Um, he could finish dead last. He could finish 10 over par. But if he goes out and he has 20 or 30 birdies, he could very well be an optimal play. So um, I love the type of floor that he gives you, given his birdie upside. And I really like the potential as well if he's able to keep the scores low. For my value play, we have Sebastian Munoz, a $7,700 golfer who grades out very similarly, similarly to Thomas Peters, I think with actually a little bit more consistency. He's the, he's the notable fantasy scorer. He comes in number six in the field in fantasy points per event. We've also seen some really good form from him of late as well. He has top fives at the John Deere Classic, also at the Charles Schwab Challenge, and he's been gaining um, off the tee and putting very solidly. He's gaining 0.36 strokes off the tee, 0.46 strokes putting, and I think he has really good upside in a DFS sense. Um, so just like Thomas Peters, he's somebody who outscores his finishing position, routinely goes out and makes 20, 25 birdies in an event, um, even when it's not necessarily a birdie fest. Um, and I think he's a really solid piece in a no-cut event like this. Um, people like Justin Thomas, people like Sebastian Munoz or Thomas Peters, um, they're, they're going to go out full blast in every single hole. They're, they're not going to club down. And uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for at the Olympics. For my diamond in the rough, we have Renato Peratore, um, somebody you guys have probably never played in DFS before, unless you're a European tour player. Um, he comes in at $6,900, um, and he's somebody that casual golf fans are definitely going to avoid this week. Um, he's a solid player all around, um, if you haven't had any experience with him. He gains a lot of his strokes with his short game, though. Um, his ball striking is pretty much just good enough to get by. He'd probably be around a, a neutral ball striker, if I had to guess. And uh, while he isn't the most precise, he does average well over 300 yards with his driver. Um, the last time we saw him on tour, he was averaging right around 315 yards per drive, um, which is well above average, especially for this field. Um, when you're this far down the board, the options really do get thin. I mean, looking at players that don't even play on the European tour, people that we have hardly ever seen, if ever seen at all, and uh, in the $6,000 range, I'm much more willing to go to a guy like Paratore who plays with you know high-level competition from week to week on the European tour, um, has driving distance that we know is a, a prerequisite at this course, um, and has a really good short game as well. So he, that's why he's my diamond in the rough. And finally, for my flyer play, we have Seth Straka, a $6,400 golfer who enters with little to no expectations. I don't think anyone expects him to go out to medal or even top five or anything like that. Um, but he definitely has a lot higher of a chance to do so than the guys priced around him. Uh, pretty much everyone priced below Paratore on the pricing board from pretty much $6,800 below is somebody that's not a PGA Tour player and not a European Tour player. Uh, the one exception to the role is Straka here, who's obviously a PGA Tour regular. And while he isn't a bomber by any means, he's somebody who averages over 300 yards per drive. So just like Paratore, he's somebody that I think has enough length to get by. And if you can find some magic with the flat stick, who knows what happens. Um, over the last 32 rounds, he's been gaining consistently off the tee and putting. I'm um, gaining over 0.15 strokes per round in both categories. And while he's been a slight loser on approach, he's able to gain significantly at the Travelers with his irons. And we saw him finish with top 10 upside at that event. Um, so that's exactly what we're looking for here. We're looking for him to go out, um, gain with the irons. He's been very consistent with the off the tee play and the putting. Um, and I'm going to have him in a few lineups where I need some salary flexibility. Um, the guys priced around him are, are not people that I can reliably go to, people that I don't even, I honestly don't even know who they are. Um, I've maybe seen them like once or twice in my entire life, if at all, um, and it hasn't been televised, if that makes sense. So uh, I'm going to be going to Straka if I need that salary flexibility. Um, to, but to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to do it very often. Um, I'm much more willing to be a little bit more balanced with my approach this week. Um, only spend that for like one or two of the really big game, name guys um, and live in that $7,000 range. So um, that's what I got for Seth Straka. That's all for this week's DFS picks. Um, I'm going to have my top six value plays out for the Olympics tomorrow morning. Those will be my top six plays, $7,500 and below for this week's golf tournament. Obviously with a field that's only 60 players wide, um, not that many options down low. It's going to be particularly hard to identify some options down there, uh, but we'll do our best to give you guys the best six. Um, let me know in the comments who you guys think win this week, wins this week for a chance to win a free month of my Patreon projections 
you guys are able to guess the winner, I'm going to give you guys that free month. So make sure to enter. It's free. Might as well. Um, as always, make sure to like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the content. It really helps me out with growing the channel. It also helps you guys with making sure you guys can see my content. So a win-win right there really goes a long way. And uh, good luck with your lineups this week. Let's win some cash, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the value picks.